What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be your review for Love & Hip Hop New York, Season 10, Episode 10. Okay, 10, 10, 10, 10. Um, so we start this episode... Look, alright. We start this episode off with Jonathan. He's out with his nephew. He invites Yandy and Sin to come and meet his nephew. Come to find out his nephew has a... Um, he was born with a certain condition that joined that I think he said it joins his joints together And so his nephew has never been able to walk. He's a sweetheart. He looks like he's a cute kid very intelligent very precocious um, I guess he has like an Instagram following because Yandy said you know I follow you on Instagram and you're a sweetheart or what have you we find out that All of his doctors here in the States have said that there's really nothing they can do for him except for amputate his legs Jonathan said they found a doctor in Spain who's saying, look, I can make this happen. I think I can help him walk again, but the surgeries are going to cost almost $200,000. Jonathan's thing is, you know, at one point in time, I had that kind of money. But because of my drug addiction and my bad decisions, I no longer have that kind of liquid cash. And, you know, I want to try to make it happen. Um... So Yandy decides that she's going to help him raise the money and they're going to have a jump-a-thon. Now look. And this is coming from someone who, although it was a short period of time, I was in a wheelchair. I could not walk. Um, they didn't know if I was going to be able to walk. I had to go to therapy and I had to go through a whole lot of stuff to get to the point where I can walk again. Thank God. But let me tell you what I would not want to do I would not want to sit around and watch a bunch of people jumping rope to raise money for me I'm talking about me I'm not trying to be disrespectful or be you know insensitive I was just thinking to myself y'all couldn't have come up with nothing else Jonathan said, you know, I want to make his dreams come true with being able to swim and do all these things he wants to do and I'm thinking so you have a jump-a-thon? Anyway, I'm not going to belabor the point. He, um, The other thing I felt bad about was, and I know you want to think positive, but when Jonathan was like, you know, he'll never be able to, his dreams of swimming and da-da-da. And I'm thinking, yeah, he can do all of that without, you know, and I know, I, I understand the, the difference. I understand what the point is. But anyway, I, I you know. They were able to raise the money, because I'm not going to belabor that. They were able to raise the money, thank God. I'll get back to how things went down. At the jump a -thon, it looked like they were having a good time. It kind of took me back to, y'all remember like in the, I don't know how old y'all are, but I know in my age group, I remember when Double Dutch was a big thing, and they would have these elaborate Double Dutch competitions, and I remember jumping Double Dutch with my friends. Do people jump Double Dutch like that anymore? I don't know. Um, I don't recall seeing those types of things like we used to see, but maybe I'm just not paying attention. I don't know. So that was that. Jim Jones and y'all been asking for and she is here, okay? Mama Jones made a cameo in this um, episode, honey. Um, y'all know, if you guys follow the news, you know that her house burned down. Um, I want to say like about a year or so ago, like right before Christmas. Not this Christmas, but I think last Christmas. And they, you know, in the process of building her a new home and... Um... She's doing some sort of, it looks like some sort of like YouTube show, like something from Harlem or whatever. So Jim was on the show and her and Jim were doing what her and Jim do, honey. <coughs> he said that the house is almost ready. He's just waiting for the interior decorated to make some final, some final things to finish it up. Now, I don't know why nobody else knew, but I knew Christy was the damn interior decorator before Jim said it. But, of course, they're afraid to tell the mom because, you know, the mom don't see it for, for Chrissy. Her and Chrissy just don't get along. And she'll probably love that house until she find out Chrissy designed it and then she's going to hate everything in it. Y'all know how that go. Also, just as an honorable mention, who the fuck did Mama Jones finger waves? Who did that to her? Who did that to her? Did y'all see those finger waves? I mean, did she use jam? Like, y'all remember jam, like that that thick back-in-the-day gel, that jam, that th What does she use to set those? All right, I'm done. I'm not going to keep belaboring that. But y'all, do y'all see what I see? Anyway. <laughs> Just like, do y'all see what I see? <laughs> Golly. 
Uh, then we see Miss Olivia hook up with um, Yandy, and of course they're catching up and all that good stuff. Olivia is engaged, but her man does not want to be on camera. He ain't about that life, and so we respect that. Uh, happy for you, Olivia. She tells Yandy about the situation with Rich. And, of course, Yandy is like, yo, that's my boy. Are you sure? Like, you think maybe anything could have been misunderstood? You think... It, and, you know, Olivia was like, yeah, no, nah, I've seen the paperwork. I've seen the numbers. Ain't nothing misunderstood. Like, it is what it is. Your boy. I know y'all still cool, but he took my money. Then they talk about the whole Yandy thing. I mean, Kimbella thing. And how her and Kimbella ain't cool anymore. And this way I'm confused, y'all. And... This question is going to take me to the end of the episode with some stuff that went down at the end of the episode. I thought Kim Bella was mad at Yandy because Kim Bella felt like Yandy set her up and threw her under the bus with that whole situation with Mendeecee's baby's mother a few seasons ago. When did this become about... Yandy not defending her when Chrissy was whooping her ass. And if that's what you mad about, then you know what? I feel the way Yandy feel. How you mad at me, but you not mad at the person who whooped your ass? I'm just saying. And if you look at the tape, now mind y'all, I wasn't watching the show back then, so I ain't got no dog in this fight. But if you watch the tape, Yandy was trying to break the fight up. Now, I don't know what happened before or after. I only see the during. And the during... Look like Yandy tried to save you from that whooping that Chrissy put on you. But at the end of the day, I thought the fight, I thought they fell out over some other stuff. When did it become about Chrissy? I, I guess because it's a new season. I, 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 I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't understand when this became about Chrissy, but neither here nor there, you guys. Jonathan, Kimbella, and Chrissy meet up. Jonathan's trying to clear the air up. Jonathan's trying to say, look. I, I'm friends with all y'all. How can we all just get back on the same damn page? Kimbella showed up on 20. See, Kimbella got... See, you know, I don't like it when y'all put me in positions to have to defend people that I don't really see for like that. I don't really see it for Yandy like that. But on this one, I just feel... I, I, I see Yandy's point of view on some of this stuff. So, Kimbella, you showed up to this meeting with Jonathan on 20. And I feel like you showed up to this meeting with Jonathan on 20 because Chrissy was there. That's just how I feel. I'm sorry. I could be wrong, but that's just how I feel. The same way you was, you know, you was all rah-rah at Jonathan's fragrance um, launch because you knew Chrissy was going to be there. She was going, you know, be rah-rah with you. But at the end of the day, Jonathan was trying to say, look, you... You carried a bone that wasn't accurate. And yes, I felt some kind of way about it because that's not how that whole conversation went down with Yandy. Now, Yandy was being shady and Yandy was throwing some jabs. But at the end of the day, it really wasn't that deep. Yandy wasn't saying nothing that the rest of America wasn't saying when they read that same damn article about Jim Jones and Chrissy House going into foreclosure. Was it with a little bit more sauce on it? Um, yeah. But again, if I'm Yandy, I'm going to say the same shit. I'm going to be like, mm. Well, his bills was paid when I was his manager. See, I'm going to say that. I'm going I'm to say it. So, I, I, I don't... I don't know. Jonathan, you know, he was just trying to... He said, look, at the end of the day, can we all just get along because I'm having this charity event, you know, for my, for my nephew. And, you know, let's put all of the bullshit aside. And can y'all be there to support me? Now, Kimbella said, I'll be there. Chrissy was like... I think I'm just going to send him a check because Yandy's going to be there and I just I just don't feel like it. And she ended up not going and that's what she said. She was like, I just didn't, I didn't feel like being in a situation where my spirit was going to be, was going to be damaged. And you know what? I'm with you on that one, um, Chrissy. Write the check. The end result is the same. He ain't make no more money or no less money if you showed up. Versus, you know, if you hand delivered the check versus if you cashed after the money. I mean, it's the same shit. I'm with you on that one, Chrissy. I ain't gonna need me putting myself in that situation. Now, Rich goes to meet with his business manager, a.k.a. Ma Dukes. And he is just like, this is what Olivia is saying. She's saying, and basically his mother is saying the same thing that Rich is saying. Like, look, you wrote the record. You paid yourself. Olivia made money off of performing the record. And a lot of times she performed the record without letting you know. So you ain't even get a cut. You didn't know nothing about it. So you made your money. She made her money. All is fair, love, and war. And 
if, if you really want to get jiggy with it, she owe you money from all the money you put into helping her develop her career and shooting the video and doing all these things that you didn't even charge her for. Now, at the end of the day, I don't know who's telling the truth. I, I really don't. But I definitely see both sides of the coin. I told y'all before, the record industry ain't nothing pretty. And depending on what kind of contract you sign, depending on what the contract said, if Rich wrote the, the, uh, the record and whatever contract you sign said that Rich gets all of the revenue from the record and the way you're going to make your money is because it's by performing it, then oh well, you signed it and all is fan, love, and war. And it ain't about friends. It's about business. And... Honestly, that's how most artists make their money. Most artists make their money off of touring and off of performing. The record label makes their money off of the sales. Like, that just is what it is. Unless you're a megastar and you have renegotiated a contract. Y'all heard the stories a million times about these, rec about these people who go out here and sign these album deals. And the album goes five times platinum and you end up with nothing. I mean, it, 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 it is what it is. Like, y'all know that's what happens. So, anyway... We're down to the um, charity event with Jonathan, and it looked like they're having a good time. I can't even front y'all. It looks like they're having a good time. they double dutching. they doing all kinds of flips and tricks and all that good stuff. Look like Yandy even know what she's doing, a little something, something. Samaya, who I have no idea who this woman is. She said something about she was living in an attic, child. I don't know. I don't know nothing about her story. I don't. I wasn't watching the show then. I don't know nothing about nobody living in the attic. All I know is about the flowers in the attic, and I think that's just a different, a different show. I don't think that's this show. Um, but she said that she went off and made her millions in the slim tea industry, and that she happens to be in town doing some business. And Jonathan invited her, so she came down to support. Now this is how I feel about it. Now maybe I'm about to be real ignorant right now, but this is how I feel about it. If you a millionaire and Jonathan is your boy, why you can't just write a check? You can write it off on your taxes. What's a hundred thousand dollars between friends? Anyway, but she did come down to support, and I'm sure she did drop off some money, honey. Um, Kimbella shows up, she brings the kids, everything is great. Jonathan is trying to get Kimbella and Yandy to talk. Yandy ain't feeling it. Yandy Every time Jonathan try to bring Yandy to come over and say something to Kimbella, Yandy's like, yeah, nah, I'm good. Nah, I'm good. And she's like, look, we cool, Jonathan, but I'm, I'm just not here for it. I don't feel like it. I'm not here for it. And like she told Olivia, that's the last time Yandy's going to ever have an opportunity to say we ain't friends. Like, that's the last time that, that, that I'm going to give you that opportunity. And again, Yandy, I ain't even mad at you. Um, the mayor of wherever they are, because it clearly ain't New York City, um, dropped off $5,000. And what we find out is that he did raise enough for the first two surgeries. He said he raised $100,000 or $97,000. So I'm guessing that um, the the hundred the, the hundred and however forty fifty thousand dollars is for all of the surgeries together. So they have enough to get the process started, and I'm sure that before this is over with and all of that, he'll have all of the money, and that's great. I'm happy for them. Jim Jones and Chrissy are trying to figure out whether they're gonna let Mama Jones know that Chrissy designed that house. If y'all know what I know, you better keep that shit to yourself, cause you know that's just a fight you don't need. Let her find out on TV like the rest of us. By then she'd be the moved in the house, and she would have talked about how much she loved the house, and there's no way she can backtrack at that point, because what's she gonna say? She been living in the house that she loved for the last three, four months, and now all of a sudden you don't like it no more, cause you found out Chrissy designed it. Child, please, whatever. Um. Rich, uh, Cisco, and um, Peter Guns, child. They meet up to, to talk this whole situation out. <sighs> Peter's supposed to be the mediator. Rich comes in on 20. I mean, he doesn't start the conversation with the... So, yeah, Olivia came to me and told me that, you know, you told her I stole her money. Rich comes in on 20. And Cisco was like, look, at the end of the day, you know, me and you have had our issues. Because at first he was like, well, I was just trying to help her out. I was just trying to, you know, show her 
you know, how to help her make some money. I took her to different record labels. I was doing this and I was doing that. And then he was like, look, at the end of the day, man, you have had a whole lot of issues, but I have never known you to be a thief. And I didn't tell her you were a thief. I didn't tell her you stole any money. And after, and then he even yelled at Peter for a minute and was like, you supposed to be mediating, but you always take his side. I, I don't care. I don't. I don't care. Um, after all of that rah rah Rich was doing, he yelling, he pointing, spit coming out of his mouth, he sweating and shit. He going through all of this, and then at the end, he going to say, I mean, Cisco won't come up off of it, so I guess he's telling the truth. Really? That's all he got to do is just stick to his lie? And, it, and he must not be lying? Okay. Let me know. I'm see how that work out. Um... But Cisco did say something that did make me think he was telling the truth. He said, I tell you what, let's do this again. And next time, let's invite Olivia. And let Olivia tell you who told her that I that you stole her money. Because it wasn't me. So let's all be in the same room. And then she can have that conversation. So that, now that's what made me think, well, maybe he not lying. Because why would he voluntarily want to be in a room for her for her to bust him out? All right, last but not least, child, last but not least, Jonathan is having a slumber party. He's having a, um, a burlesque-themed pajama party for all of his girlfriends. It's her, it's him, Yandy, Sin, Samaya, and um, Kim Bella comes. And Kim Bella was like, I knew Yandy was going to be here. I don't care because, you know, I'm, I'm friends with Jonathan and blah, blah, blah. So then they play this lame ass truth of dare, and all it was was an excuse to get Yandy and um, Kimbella to try to talk. Cause the truth or the dare, or whatever was, do you have beef with anybody in this room? And it was so transparent and so obvious on what they were, what the, the issue was, or what they were supposed to be talking about, child. And that's when Kimbella starts going off about Yandy was fake because Yandy was supposed to be uh, friends. And she was supposed to defend me, and she let me get beat up. And I, I was like, "What? When did, when did y'all's beef become about that?" I, I I'm really y'all, hook a sister up in the comments because I'm so confused. And you know, finally, Yandy was like, "You know what? I, I don't understand. Like, I don't understand how you don't have a problem." With the person who whooped your ass. But you got a problem with me. The person who tried to stop you from getting whooped. Because I didn't try hard enough. Like what, make that make sense. They get to arguing. Kim Bella was doing way too much. She done stood up. She pointed her finger all in um, um, all in the girl face. And all this other stuff. And somehow Kim Bella is upset about a conversation that Yandy had with Jonathan. Which means Jonathan carrying bones. Because how else would she even know about the conversation? And then she threw a drink on Yandy. And, of course, security runs in and they defend. They And Sin is like, yo, Kimbella, oh, that's not necessary. She's like, Kimbella, you're doing too much. Like, you're really doing the most. I love Sin because Sin did not raise her voice. She was like, yo, Yandy. I mean, you know, she was like, yo, Kimbella, you just doing too much. Kimbella, we don't have to be violent. Kimbella. And I was like, exactly, Kimbella, you are doing the absolute most. And then finally, you could see it in her face, that look. Right before you make a decision, when you say F this, and you just make it do what it do. And then Yandy got up and proceeded to jump on Kimbella. And y'all, that's where it ended. But I need y'all to make that shit make sense to me. When did this argument become about what happened in season one instead of what happened last season or the season before last with Kimbella and Yandy? I, I, I'm so, I'm confused. Let me know. And when y'all figure it out... Look, we can talk about it. Peace.